Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about politically motivated attacks by scientists. In 1931, Einstein's theory of relativity wasn't very popular around Germany because Einstein was a Jew. So 100 of Germany's top scientists, including two Nobel Prize winners in physics, wrote a letter attacking Einstein's theory of relativity. They said that the theory of relativity was Jewish science and was at odds with Aryan physics. The German government sponsored conferences and book burnings to denounce Einstein and his theories. Einstein responded to this attack by saying, why did they need a hundred scientists? All they needed was just one fact to prove me wrong. The German government argument was based around the idea of consensus. One hundred scientists against one, obviously the hundred scientists had to be correct. This is exactly the same argument which global warming alarmists use. They claim that there's this huge consensus of scientists who agree with the alarmist viewpoint. For people who think like this, the claim of consensus makes it unnecessary to deal with any actual facts or to engage in debate. Now let's fast forward to yesterday. President Trump's COVID advisor, Dr. Scott Atlas of Stanford University made this tweet. Lockdown tragedy in DC schools. Minority kids fall way behind. Distance learning is a failure. But no, listen to media's favorite public health experts. Test asymptomatics, isolate them, stop in-person schools. My God, stop the madness, open schools. All of the empirical evidence points to the fact that Dr. Atlas is correct. There's lots of open school systems around the world, including Sweden, which never shut their schools down. We know from the available evidence that opening schools is not particularly dangerous. According to the CDC director, ordinary flu is five to ten times deadlier for children than is COVID-19. School districts will begin to, to wrestle with this. I think it is important to um, try to be factual as we go through this. Uh, when we look at right now uh, the mortality of this particular COVID virus, um, in the first uh, almost 218,000 people we looked at February to July, um, there was um, 52 individuals under the age of 18. Um, and, and if I recollect, about 35 were actually school age. Some of them were younger than school age. We're looking critically at those, those individuals and you know, uh, clearly there's an increase in comorbidities related to significant medical conditions that we've already assumed. But I think that's important because what that means actually is the, the, the risk per 100,000 so far you know, into the outbreak, uh, six months into it, is in fact that we're looking at about 0.1 per 100,000. So another way to say that it's one in a million. And I'm not trying to belittle that, I'm just trying to make sure we look at it proportional because if you do the same thing for influenza deaths uh, for school age children over the last five years, they're anywhere from five to 10 times greater. So I want people to understand the, the risk properly as they make that decision. And obviously influenza, we also benefit from having therapy and a vaccine. Uh, so I, want, I don't want people to overestimate the risk of serious illness to individuals that are school age. So what Dr. Atlas is saying should not be controversial. But because Dr. Atlas works for President Trump, he's considered to be the wrong kind of scientist, just like Einstein was in Germany. So 70 Stanford University colleagues of Dr. Atlas wrote a letter to him accusing him of falsehoods and misrepresentations of science. I wonder why they were only able to come up with 70 authors. The authors writing against Einstein were able to come up with 100. And why did they need 70 scientists? All they needed was a single fact. Alarmists never engage in any kind of debate. They simply organize into gangs of thugs and go around attacking people with different viewpoints. Here in Wyoming, the schools have been open for more than two months, and the number of deaths under the age of 19 from COVID-19 in the state is exactly zero. Dr. Atlas is presenting ideas based on actual data and actual science. But because he works for President Trump and works against the political agenda of the left, he's being viciously attacked by 70 other scientists. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the public is scientifically illiterate, and they fall for these sort of consensus-based ploys. Michael Crichton explained what this is all about. He said, let's be clear, the work of science has nothing whatever to do with consensus. Consensus is the business of politics. Science, on the contrary, requires only one investigator who happens to be right, 
which means that he or she has results that are verifiable by reference to the real world. In science, consensus is irrelevant. What is relevant is reproducible results. The greatest scientists in history are great precisely because they broke with the consensus. There's no such thing as consensus science. If it's consensus, it isn't science. If it's science, it isn't consensus, period. 500 years ago, Galileo said, in questions of science, the authority of a thousand isn't worth the humble reasoning of a single individual. People imagine that because we live in an information age, human nature has changed, but it hasn't. Government and academia still treat heretic scientists just as badly as they did 500 years ago. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this sort of junk science for over a decade. You can visit him in Curia on the web at realclimatescience.com.